what's up guys this is hh trader back with another video and today it is memorial day um i was just thinking sitting with the markets you know kind of dead or whatever and just thinking about some of the things that i have just seen and learned over the course of my trading um wanted to go through a little bit of the things that I've seen and the things that are working for me and the things that um, I've noticed that have made me better in, you know, being patient and visualizing the whole environment and all of these things and just seeing what is obvious. So I'm going to go through a number of things. Right now I have my TOS, my Thinkorswim pulled up uh, with several stocks here, but we're not going to go through all of them. Uh, we're just going to look for a couple of examples. We might just go over maybe ELEV from uh, Friday and maybe BMR. Uh, but number one thing that I'm looking for when I'm coming into trades, I'm looking for a nice catalyst, a nice reason why this thing can go in my direction. Because for the most part, I'm a 100% long trader. I'm going long. I want the prices to go up. Um. And so I want a catalyst that is like, OK, this catalyst is good. Why is this thing going down? Well, of course, what goes up must come down. If I see something gapping or I see something with a high percentage gain, of course, gravity is going to have some type of effect and pull that thing down. Right. The other thing um, I've noticed, I'm, I've pretty much thrown away any kind of offerings and split plays. Uh, haven't really touched any of those. I just, I don't, uh, I don't see a lot of potential there for me and the way that I like to trade and a lot of dip buying potential is just not there. Uh, I focus pretty much around the prices of $2 and above. Uh, I really don't care how high it goes. It's just at least be over two bucks, you know? Um, usually when I'm looking for the gaps, the most profitable gaps that I'm seeing or whatever, are gaps that are pretty much around like 50%. And the reason why is because when I'm buying a dip, if we look at, if we think about how the scans work and what attracts the people to uh, particular tickers, uh, percentage gain is one of those things that people look for, right? And so if something is up 100%, but it falls by half, well, it fell to 50%. Is it still viable? It will people still see it on their scanner at 50%? I think so. If it's at 50% and it falls by half, that's 25%. Is it likely for it to still be getting looked at? Well, it depends on the environment. It depends on what else is up on the day, right? But usually, if if I can get something to fall by half and it's over maybe like 30%, there is a little bit of potential, a little bit of give there for a, a little bit of a covering by the shorts. Uh, the next thing is the shorts need to have room to win. So on the other day, uh, I was looking at BMR and how it was trading. BMR, looking on the daily chart, it broke these previous highs here of basically the $4. So let me, so the $4 here was the breakout. And on this day, I was like, man, it would be crazy if this thing gets back down to $4. And at that point, it was trading around like $6, something like that. And I was thinking, well, maybe it can get up. And this is after it had came down during pre-market, right? And it was trading around maybe like $6 and kind of going flat. And I was like, this thing could be going up. And I was actually trading it with a backbone of NVIDIA, both NVIDIA and this stock had um or nvidia was in this stock's news but nvidia is the thing that sucked the attention away right but looking on the daily chart i was trading and looking at how bullish nvidia was and i was like man this would be great if bmr would be able to you know play around and come back to this obvious level right this obvious four dollar level and so i saw it come down to like six bucks i bought like maybe around 620 on my first buy this if you look at the daily chart the overall daily chart this is not a obvious position right if we look back there's nothing else that certifies the 620 as a obvious support now could it go higher and pay you for not taking an obvious trade sure but 
when I'm looking at the overall potential of the um, of the level, this four dollar level was it. This four dollar level was the obvious point that everybody can see. And what I've what I've realized is when I'm trading something, when I'm buying a dip where everybody can see the support, it usually works out better for me. Right. Uh, the next thing. Um, stocks that obviously give back a lot of profits when we see a lot of stocks they give a bunch of wicks let's see if i can find one that's uh got a lot of wicks on it pltr amazon none of these that i'm really seeing right now but basically a stock that has a whole lot of wicks on it try to stay away from those uh because buying the dips on those sometimes they don't recover that well uh, another thing let's see increasing or continued volume in the dip that is a big one uh like on bmr and i let me go to elb uh elev it had a nice little dip too so what i'm looking for on a daily chart if i go over here and let's go to um we can do bmr so what i'm looking for is increasing volume in these dips right and so let me drag this down. So what was the volume here? So the volume on this candle was 22 million shares traded, right? 22 million shares pushing it back down under the $6. On the next candle, it has 6 million shares. That is a big drop from one hour to the next. Then the next candle, it had 3 million shares. And another one. So we see continued volume down here in the dip. Now this this obvious level that we pointed out in the other one was around four dollars. So four dollars was maybe an expected support there, and you can see how it bounced off of that hour. Of course, this is hindsight. We can see this. Uh, we can see the bounce here. But at the time, the obvious point that wasn't made yet was a four dollars. This thing got up from two million. And it popped back up here for a nice cover. Now you can see where the shorts won from. They won from the eight down here to the six, down here to the obvious support level. And this is where they were like, ooh, we need to cover. And that's where you see that buying or that covering back up before selling back to this level. And it's been holding this obvious level for a while now. And that's BMR. Another, another thing that I've been looking at is... Um, so who's competing on the day? What tickers, what is what is the the other tickers doing on a day? No matter what their gain is, what is the attention? Who's attention seeking on the day, right? Um, behind that, if the market is going down or up, things that I've noticed. So things that I've noticed in the penny stock world, when the market is going down and we see penny stocks that are going against the market move, those penny stocks give some incredible opportunities for scalpers. I've seen it multiple times. Market's going down and those penny stocks are working their way up. But on the flip side, if the market is going up, sometimes we either get overloaded. We get so many penny stocks that it's hard to nail down what is going to be the one on the day because there's so many things going up or we have an instance where the larger cap stocks, the, the mid to large cap stocks like Tesla, Amazon, UPS, some of these other stocks, NVIDIA, are ripping with the spy and they uh, weaken the move of a penny stock. But it all depends on the catalyst as well. Like going back up to number one, the catalyst is a big deal. Um, but next thing we got here is... Um, ATR, the average true range of a stock or of a stock move on the day. So let's go to ELV. Where'd it go? ELEV. And let's flip over here. Now, this is the four hour and this is the two hour, right? So the way that I do this um, is I have a, a calculated, a custom calculator on my ELE or not ELEV on my average true range. This is a custom calculation that um, calculates based on the last 14, 15 minute bars because my entries are on the 15 minute. 
So flip back over here to ELEV. On a 15 minute bar, it's going to calculate the last 14 bars. So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So these 14 bars will be on a weighted average in my TOS. And so I'm looking, I'm like, man, what is the average range? And does that average range meet the criteria that I want for a winner? So let's say I'm going for 10 cents and that's it. Well, if the stock is giving a consistent 20 to 30 cent range, 10 cents is achievable. My expectations aren't too big and I am in a place where I can capitalize on that 10 cents so I can size in for the 10 cent play. If I'm looking for 20 cents, but the stock is only given a average of 20 cents per bar, are my expectations too high? Do I need to maybe bring down my expectations or do I need to um, look to take something close to that and then look for a pullback? Because what I've seen, especially in the lower price penny stocks, when I get in and I'm looking for a specific um a cent gain or or a dollar amount like 14 cents or 10 cents if the average true range is at or around my goal there is usually some type of snapback it's crazy how the shorts manipulate the stock some kind of snapback there that happens for it to continue lower i'm like okay okay so i'm seeing this happen maybe on these i need to be a little bit more um, active with my limit orders. So I'm usually using market orders, I'm usually using limit orders. Now, when it comes to buying, I like to use limit orders because I want to get a specific price. And when it comes to selling, I like limit orders. Now, depending on the liquidity on the ticker, let's say if you got a million shares versus uh, 10 million shares versus 50 million shares, the liquidity allows you to get filled a lot faster but if you put limit orders it doesn't matter if it never hits that limit order there could be liquidity all above it and it never comes down and hits your limit order and you just don't get filled right at the same rate if you're trying to sell out at the top plenty of liquidity but it never hits that price and some i've noticed in my trading I'm up there, I'm like, man, just hit this price, hit this price. And I have to make sure that I'm not getting greedy. So greedy that, especially when I'm in the green, you know, I'm up a couple hundred bucks or something like that. And I get too greedy looking for too much and not taking what I already have or taking some of what I already have on that sign of weakness. And the reason for this is because some days I see the markets, they'll come up and show a little sign of weakness do a little drop down and then break through that level. And so what I've realized is I've got to stop allowing, stop looking for the breakout. Trade within what I have planned. Trade within what I have planned, right? Because the breakout, of course, we know most breakouts don't go anywhere. They may get up and then have a big flush, right? And that's why it's so important to have those limit orders up there because limit orders are going to be a lot quicker than you at getting out of the uh, position, right? You could put it in half. You could... Now, for me, with my um, strategy, I am trying to take 75% of if, if I reach my goal, I get to the goal percentage, 10 cents, 14 cents, 20 cents. When I reach that goal, I want 75 of my position out of there. And I want to be holding 25% above my break even, right? Let the 25% play out. Uh, if it wants to continue ripping, great. If it doesn't, hey, it's still a green day. I took the majority of my profit off the uh, off the line or off out of the market, and I'm risking very little, right? Uh, the next thing is with these movements, you know, we've talked a lot about average true range. We've talked about the consistency of the uh, movements. Can you see the consistent 10, 20 cent is giving it over and over again? But also we want to see um, consistent support on the level twos. When you get to a level, and I've noticed this multiple times, when you get to a obvious level, 
you start to see bigger sizes come in on the bid or the ask. If you get to resistance, you may see bigger size come on the ask. When you get to support, you may see bigger size come at or below the bid. And I've noticed this over and over and over again. Does that mean that it's automatic buy? No, because those bigger sizes could be manipulation. Those bigger sizes, you need to make sure and read the tape because what's on the books, what's on the level two books over here is totally different from what's getting filled in the actual market. So are those big sizes, are they getting broken through? Are those sizes getting broken down? Or are those sizes holding up and you seeing a nice bounce off of their level? So these are all things that I just take into consideration. Um, another thing, uh, for, for the relative volume, I, I see a lot of people, they look for relative volume, high relative volume. But most of the time, I've noticed that high relative volume is usually very very noticeable i have a uh relative volume type um feature or attribute here on my scans and i look through and i'm looking at the relative volume and usually the trades that do the best for me are getting above five above a uh a five in the relative volume on the day right and um those powerful moves those powerful retracements is something about that high volume in a dip right now sometimes some things become unpredictable and they kind of dry up and then later on in the day they all of a sudden pop up right but some things when it's so good people are just buying and buying and you see it just bouncing and holding a level right bouncing and holding a level now this is where risk management comes in you can see it bouncing and holding that level and maybe it'll break through and continue going down or it can go in your favor and now you're in a green trade and you're basically in a driver's seat, right? But these are things that I'm just thinking about on Memorial Day uh, before I go and try to get something to eat. Um, this is just a little short video and I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Peace out.